Hello and welcome to the Sky Food Channel. Today, uh, change of the photo plant for Anterina Suroca, the silk moss from Madagascar. Um, you, you can see them already here. I just changed uh, the other cage. Some of them are in a really nice L5 stage now, last stage, but still there are some smaller ones. You can see both of them here. The smaller one is L4 and the bigger one with the prominent red spines are the L5 stage. So they have eaten a lot of the Prunus Lauro Cerasus leaves here and I will have to change uh, the leaves uh, last time because in three days I will put them back onto a, a plant and then we let them there until they have finished uh, the making their cocoons. We see here a lot of these pickle pellets on the bottom of the plastic box. I mean for me it's also an experiment to find out whether this is uh, efficient and uh, uh, yeah, a good method. I've seen already some problems, you know, on Terino Suraka, they like to wander around in, this, in the moments just before the mold. And um, that's a danger if you have small cages and some openings like here between the bottles or if, when they can crawl onto the netting and have no contact with the leaves of the father plant anymore, they can dry out and die. And that's probably one of the problems of this setting here. We have to pay attention uh, that they don't drive away from the father plant too far so they, that they cannot come back to eat some more of the Prunus Lauro Cerasus. I mean the plant stays fresh very well also um, if it's only in this bottle it has used up uh, uh, about a third of the water of this bottle but the, the leaves they still seem to be fresh and they are a bit leathery so they lose the water not so fast that's also good uh, as a foot plant compared for example with ligustrum ovalifolium that's a very fragile leaves and they dry out very fast so one of the problems you can see here there are two three four five larvas here this one is dead already this also is dead this is too small and there are two living l5 stage that i have to immediately bring back so that's the problem i told you with the wandering around of the caterpillars so it's better to have a really a completely closed uh, box for them that is the case when the plant the potted plant is in here in this hole then it's completely closed and no larva no caterpillar can crawl away and we don't lose them uh, like we do here and for the next thing it's the same that I did already I just prepared some uh, plants like this again I have to empty out this box here I also will uh, keep the fecal pellets that I collected here just to find out how many they produce during their lifetime I mean it's just uh, an estimation then at the end but yeah to know how many how many kilograms of leaves of Bruno Slauro Celsius we need for let's say 100 uh, cocoons to be produced that would be a nice uh, a nice data if you want to upscale the whole processing a little bit. So I was there with the plants, yeah. Don't forget to wash the plants, that's important that they are clean and in that case also safe for the caterpillars. Yeah, and after I have wash them normally I just let some drops of water on the leaves also that's not a problem some of the caterpillars like also I've seen on Terina or Suraka they like a lot to drink water from the 
surface of the plant because that's something they can do in their natural habitat also. In the morning sometime there is dew on the leaves and I have seen a lot of these caterpillars eating the dew from the leaves in the morning when it's, when it's still cool and that's a thing that I've seen with different uh, Tautonid mossy, not only Omterino uh, Surocco. So don't forget if you are living in a dry environment or in the winter time indoors in Europe for example, though it can be very dry and then you have to spray every day one or two times uh, the plants so that the caterpillars can drink some water from the plants because also their need for water is of course much bigger in a surrounding where the humidity is low. So now I fill this bottle with water and then I just replace all these nice big caterpillars back to the new plants. Some of the leaves are eaten up very well so I just place them somewhere and it's easy to mount them in the cage when there is uh, some a twig on it because then uh, they don't fall down easily but if you take them by the hand and want to place them on a leaf sometimes they fall down and then you have to touch the caterpillar over and over again and that's not good for these little fragile creatures so that's another one here yeah. they can crawl the, to the leaves they want to eat and of course we have to pay attention that we do not forget one because they are not so very well camouflaged com like other caterpillars that are uh, world champions in hiding with their in blending in with their colors or uh, with the structures of the skin and whatever Honterina Suraka is in this case is an easy caterpillar to find on the leaves so you easily see them here a whole colony on this twig but I cut some of the leaves away because I don't want to have all the dried out leaves then later in the cage with the new leaves so that they easily find also the new ones you have to reduce the number of old leaves left in the cage and that was I'm what I'm doing now. I just got the way this so with this hook you can just hook them into the new leaves and here also. So I think that a lot of them have survived. I was not very careful uh, checking the the box on the bottom here because otherwise I would have seen that there are some uh, caterpillars in trouble there and I could have saved them from drying out mostly that's the problem in the in the cage another one here yeah that's about it all in two days I will um, change back another potted plant and put them on the potted plant to finish their circle because I'm away then for more than a week and I cannot care for them and let's see whether this works so that you don't have to stay every day with them and they can be healthy and big also. Thanks for watching.